Good evening, all attendees. This is Stuti Varma, Senior Counselor at Univariety, and your webinar speaker for the day. Many a times when we move from one level of education to the next higher level, things do get challenging. In education, the term transition typically refers to three major transitional points when students move from elementary school to middle school, middle school to high school, and from high school to college. I believe most of the students over here belong to the later two categories. Now students, choosing a college is a huge undertaking. With many late nights spent filling out online applications, requesting transcripts and letters of recommendation, and last but not the least, writing those sleep depriving personal statements. But you keep your eye on the prize, thinking once you have chosen the right school for you, all that stress will automatically fade away. I think so specifically students who are looking for undergraduate admissions abroad would definitely find some reason in this statement. Now let's look at the changes that students generally face. Now students, this webinar is to make you aware in advance what ch uh, changes would you face. These changes can be significant academic, social, emotional, physical, or developmental changes that may also affect your educational performance. You need to be aware of these factors from before so that you can deal with it later and better. New classmates, new courses, new teachers, and new expectations can all be points of anxiety for students. Now let's look at some transition areas and what skills you need to develop as students to be pally with your new surroundings. Now these changes can be social changes. What's the first thing that you get nervous about and also excited about when you think about college? That's right, it's the social life. In college, we all are at an age where we are going through loads of physical and emotional changes. And these changes can really affect relationship with peers. College is also when issues like cliches, popularity, and bullying can get more intense. Now, we have social skills to combat these changes. Students, you need to accept that your friendships will change. Maybe you and your friend will stay best friends forever. Maybe you won't. Either way, please understand that all friendships change and grow over time. If you're no longer getting anything out of a relationship, please don't hang on to it just for the old time's sake or out of habit, specifically if it keeps you from building something new with someone else. Both you and your friends might end up in different colleges for your own interest sake and it's better to choose your college based on your interests and not based on where your friends want to go. You don't worry, you will definitely make new friends. As I said earlier, you should be open to making new friends in your current classes. You might not have the same schedule as your middle school friends. You'll be happiest if you have friends in places where you spend the most time. You should also find other people who like the same interests, who like the same things you do. This will happen naturally if you know enough about yourself and what you're good at. It's important to be with people who are interested in what you are interested in. So stay open friends in your new activities. You should also meet and visit college beforehand. You should take that effort to meet professors, counselors, and the dean before the college starts if possible. If you can, and if you get on the opportunity, you should actually avail it 
to get to know other students before you start college. I've also seen students skipping the orientation or induction sessions organized by colleges. Students, please kindly do not do that. In these orientation sessions, they, uh, your college authorities would talk about attendance, grading, and their policies. These new professors will actually have higher academic expectations than your junior and senior high school teachers. They will want you to get into your dream career. In return, they expect you to work hard and improve your skills. Specifically for students who are looking at universities abroad, generally universities abroad start their um, session one week before the actual classes start. So this one week is devoted towards the orientation session or the introduction or the icebreaker session. At any cost, students, you should not avoid it. Get a head start. You should also look for local community programs or town events where you can meet your future classmates. I think so when you're joining a college, if you have a club or if you have a hobby center in your college, this would um, your hobby center or the college uh, uh, club would help you getting to the local community programs as well. Now, students, Students who are looking at a transition phase also go through a lot of academic changes. The higher academic standards of college and increased competition will take some time and adjustments. Often students earn their lowest scores in the first year of college and then begin to figure things out. Now, research suggests that many incoming first year college students are underprepared for the quantity of coursework, struggle to meet the academic expectations set by the college professors and are not used or ready to taking responsibility for the colleges. So students, to combat this change, you need to develop advanced study skills. While there are still a large amount of handholding in high school, once you are in a college, you'll be expected to exhibit independent and advanced study skills such as analyzing, researching, note-taking, listening and comprehension to name a few. College is an excellent time to develop your independent study skills. You should start with a study skill or a self-assessment to identify areas of strengths and weaknesses. Then you should work on improving the weak areas. You should also begin using a student planner to keep track of your own assignments. You can fill in your planner daily or weekly. Keep an eye on upcoming events, guest lecture periods and announcements and write important dates in your planner. Students, you might not have realized, but the library is the best place to look for a lot of reference material and you would need to use it more often as the professors will expect you to do so. Things such as group study and group assignments will hold a completely new meaning where you would have more defined roles to fill and a great opportunity to develop teamwork and leadership skills. Now students, let me share something interesting with you. There are a lot of schools and colleges in India and abroad where teachers actually teach very few topics and the learning is mostly done by projects and assignments. Suppose there are 12 topics to be taught. So these 12 topics would be divided in between 12 students and every student is expected to make a presentation on each given topic and uh, share the presentation in the class later on. So this means that even without the professor actually sitting and teaching those 12 topics, students mutually get to learn those 12 topics by uh, the means of group study and advanced study skills. Now students, one change which always um, uh, you uh, face 
and one challenge which always you face is how to do time management now there is a thumb rule for every hour in the classroom you should plan on 3 hours of studying outside it this is not like high school where you might be able to study the night before and pass a test or exam college exams come perhaps only twice a semester which means they cover a lot if you don't keep up with the studying and learn to manage your time those exams would prove to be problematic you don't want that to happen right other than exams there would be lot that you want to catch up on there can be new found freedom there can be new friends new activities college clubs and also a sense of responsibility that would keep the adrenaline pumping but you should make sure that just do not stick to one and fail at the other activity you should plan your time by weeks and so in advance try to stick to it to the maximum and believe me by the end of it you realize that how good it has been and that you have been able to achieve quite a lot you should also explore extra curricular activities and skill development now students you should explore student organization athletics band cultural committees and other options that exist for you at college it would help you form a supportive group of friends with similar interests improve your leadership skills and start building a resume for your job applications be motivated to join a sport club or an activity it would help with making friends and ease the transition process students who are engaged in extracurricular activities tend to excel socially and academically for me a lot of high school was focused on doing everything right so that i could good and get into a good college sometimes i didn't take the time to do things just because i wanted to do them i would think about what looked best on my resume or what extra curricular would be best on that college application i think it's very easy to get caught up in trying to do all the right extra curriculars and classes concentrating on what's going to give you a job doing that extra curricular that supposedly looks really good on your resume but you're not just into that it's not done in the process you just forget to enjoy yourself take that class because you really like it do do that cool extra curricular it's perfectly fine to enjoy dancing or it's perfectly fine to get associated with a music club you would also realize students during this process of transition that with more money there are more problems financial responsibility is a pretty new concept for students who transition from high school to college you might not be the one to worry about paying tuition fee but still there can be some unpleasant situations that you might face students sometimes see the need to take out more money than necessary so that they can use it for their personal expenses in college this is definitely not a good idea because 6 months after graduation whether job or no job you need to start paying your own bills remember students you do need to think long term you need to get into the habit of creating a budget even if your parents are paying for your college entirely you should have a budget outlined and you should stick to it of course that doesn't mean that you shouldn't have fun as well budget in is in but remember that most people will look back at college as the time when they were the poorest but they had most fun you might not need to get the latest gadgets computers clothes and cars to have a good time these things can come after you have your first real job by setting limits on all your spending categories and sticking to them you would start out on a great path and form good spending habits so students apart from the skills mentioned above there are certain other important skills also that you need to develop let's have a look at them 
Have you heard of the saying that health is wealth? Definitely, you should prioritize your health and safety. It is not uncommon to see students get into trouble just because they have been ignorant of their health and safety. Keep in touch with the college and the hostel proctors. Your friends are of the same age as you, so make sure you seek an experienced advice in case of contingency and need. Also, you must keep a good track of your health. Know your allergies and the medications that you are used to for taking. Do not try any new medication just because people say it is good. And never ignore even the slightest sign of abnormal health. Now, students who are thinking of relocating to any other country destination or uh, students who might need to leave their hometown and settle down in some other part of the country might face health issues because they might not be used to the food and water conditions over there. That's the reason before you leave your house, it is very important to keep your own first aid kit handy with you. Don't be afraid to fail. First and foremost, let me tell you, I'm not talking about failing in terms of getting an F grade. The reality is that if you actually do your work and you'll probably not fail, but a lot of students, they get very worried, even if they get a B in a class, which can seem like a failure to these students. It's like, wait, what? I never had this grade before. This isn't something I do. I mean, I'm a straight A student. What's happening? But students, let's understand till the time you do not experience such a uh, uh, little uh, failures or little dents in your uh, uh, maybe academic career, you would not basically get the motivation to buck up and give your best performance. You should also learn how to cook. Now, students knowing how to cook, it helps a lot. One being that you can independently feed yourself. And second, it helps you build a great network. Students can use food to share their culture and experiences. And having the recipe for your favorite homemade comfort food can help you make the hard days at college a little easier. Knowing how to shop is also important. Now, you might be thinking that what is there to learn in shopping? But students, once you are all there by yourself, then you would understand that basically planning and shopping for groceries and what you need and what you do not need and cut short on those um, irrelevant expenses and shopping is something which is a skill that should be learned. Ask for help. The reality is that you are engaging with new academic material here. And because of that, you're going to struggle and you may need help. There's nothing wrong with you. Everyone struggles with their academics in their first year, even a Harvard student. Now, last but not the least, learn to take time out for yourself. There's a saying, students, that till the time I do not keep myself happy, I would not know how to keep the entire world happy around me. It is a very important skill to develop as learning how to take a step back from everything and de-stress. In college, so much can be going on that sometimes you want a chance to breathe. Maybe that means not going to that basketball game or not going out on a Friday night to instead stay in and watching Netflix or whatever you do to de-stress. I know I had to learn how to take some time out for myself to do things I love. Sometimes I'll decide to do my own homework later on and lie in my bed and read a book. The other times I'll get out my iPad and watch an episode for Netflix or I'll put in my headphones and dance around in my room. So looks stupid, right? But Believe me, students, it's a great de-stressing uh, te technique. So here are some tips on making a successful transition. You should read everything you can from the college, including college newsletters and handbooks. 
you should organize your days with a planner and keep a calendar that includes uh, that schedules time for homework extracurricular activities and fun too get involved in student government sports club and community organizations listen to college announcements classroom and assembly presentations and attend college and career workshops talk with your professors counselors or other staff when you have questions or when you have problems also students before you start the journey ask yourself these questions what are your short and long term goals both academically and personally when you get to college how do you think your relationship with your family will change when you go to college because you believe or not it would definitely do you expect your college grades to be similar to those you got in high school if so how would you feel if they are not how would you deal with these feelings and improve will it be difficult to discipline yourself to keep academic commitments such as attending classes and being prepared for classes if not why do you think so if so what skills do you need to manage it also do you think you'll feel stressed out at college if so list out five ways to deal with it if not why not so if i conclude students your college years are a great time in your life you'll gain new freedom and have new experiences and new responsibilities these are the days and years of in your life which will never skip your memory college may seem rather daunting at first but with time you would come to appreciate everything with your experience now with this i end my presentation this is all from my side and attendees if you have a question you can please type out your question i would answer them one by one manav thanks a lot for your comments it seems you like the presentation a lot is there something which you need to ask i think so manju has a question she is asking can i get to see the webinar again now manju uh, uh, once uh, you have registered you would get a youtube link for this webinar which you can uh, uh, view at your own um, uh, free time now rishika uh, asks a question are there any ways where we can build those skills from high school now rishika i always believe that being active in your uh, school and being active in your home and taking small responsibilities in your house would build a lot of skills so uh, i think so you should personally start taking some responsibilities in your house do some kind of house management also from the school perspective as i said start participating in the extracurricular activities and just to uh, get a feel and a look of how your high school or, or how your college days would be i think so attending summer internships in school in colleges in india and abroad would help you a lot sai kartikeya has a question what should one consider before choosing an undergraduate course so kartike i believe um, you are uh, based, um, a student from a uh, high school who are looking at uh, transition uh, to college so before um, thinking of an undergraduate course you should first look at your aptitude and your interest so aptitude is basically your expertise to do something and interest is what you are really interested in doing you should also look at your career goal and choose a course accordingly Tasleem thank you for your uh, uh, feedback Yusha has a question do you believe that attending summer programs in universities abroad that something would add to our portfolio definitely Yusha that would definitely add to your portfolio and also when i speak about summer programs 
um this is uh, something which um students should decide before they are um, at the time they are planning their course suppose if you're looking at universities abroad then you should look at summer programs for universities abroad that would uh, help you in uh, adjusting to the the environment better if you are looking at education in india then i think so you should look at summer programs in universities in india which would help you in sinking in the um, college environment in indian colleges and definitely the certificate that you would be getting out of attending a summer program would be a good value add uh, in your resume okay attendees thank you all from my side thank you for taking out time have a nice day and happy transition in your lives that's all from my side bye